Uh, the main objective for today is to get through mean absolute deviation, which I'm confident we will. The main goal for tomorrow um, is the two-way tables. And then Thursday was supposed to kind of be like a review day, flex day, but now the uh, IT team added more uh, stuff on scatter plots. So I don't know. Friday's looking up in the air. I don't know. I don't know if we're going to be able to finish all by Friday. But we'll see. Um, all right. So uh, if six girls have pets weighing zero to three pounds, five have pets weighing three to six pounds, and two have pets weighing six to nine pounds, draw a histogram representing this data. Okay. So it's a histogram. What's a, what's a histogram look like? Yeah, like a bar graph. Um, we need to have two axes here. What do you uh, What do you think the horizontal axis should be here? And then what should the vertical axis be? Number of pets. And six, five, two. So I would let's go up to six. All right, so from zero to three is have all six to go up to the top. From um, three to six pounds is going to be five, so just below that. And then from six to nine pounds, it's only two. Shade those in. back to listen to the video yesterday if it sounded better with my new earpiece. And what do you think? All right, uh, any questions there? All right, uh, Mr. Mass classes test scores on a recent test are 71, 75, 80, 83, 91, 66, 62, 78, 75, 98. Oh, they lost a lot of them. Draw histogram to represent the data. Are there any data points that appear to be outliers? Uh, well, that's a lot of, well, I guess you'd have to lose them by ranges. Yeah, let's do this one with ranges because there's too much variation there. Let's try to do a, so let's do a, what's the minimum here? 40 is the least. And then let's just go up by 10. So, um, this will be 40. And then we'll just add up how many fall within each range. So let's let's let the first one be anything between forty and forty nine. How many are there between forty and forty nine? Yeah, just uh, uh, let's do what um, 
think there'll be another trial of everything. There's six seventies. Fine. All right. So let's do six. Then that'll be the highest. And then three. So we got like one in here. We use it. Then how many are between fifty and fifty-nine? How many are there in the fifties? One, two, three. Did he solve four? Oh yeah, fifty-two. All right, good. Uh, uh, sixty and seventy. So is that in the sixties? We have three. Am I counting that right? Three sixties. And then you said in the seventies there's six of them, right? In the eighties we have uh, one, two. Three, which was the same thing as the 60s, right? And then finally in the 90s, one, two, three also. So how many were there in total? Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, 20. 20 in total. So in the middle of 20 is the 10th and the 11th number. Because they, 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 like the next, that's the histogram, but then I don't know if there's any outliers. But the bar graph is not, history is not my favorite. I mean, if there is going to be one, it looks like the 40. You know, because it says which ones appear to be an outlier. The only one I could think of that looks like it could be an outlier is the 40. But they want us to confirm it. So the median will be the 10th and 11th number. So if we had 1, 4, that's 5, and 3 is 8. <coughs> The um, the tenth and eleventh numbers are going to be in the in the seventies. So there's eight numbers that came before it. It'll be the second and third seventy. The first seventy is seventy one. What's the second seventy? Are they both seventy? No, seventy three. Seventy three is the next one. So the median would be whatever the average of 73 and 75 is. So the median 74. Oh, well, we're looking for out. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that the median 74. I, I, I need to know my quartiles because we're doing interquartile range. So if there's 20 in total. If an even number, you leave everything in. So we need 10 and 10. So we need to know the median of the first 10 and the median of the of the last 10. So the median of the first 10 would be the fifth and sixth number. The fifth number would be the biggest 50. And then, huh? Uh, yeah, well, the biggest 50 and then the smallest 60. So it would be the average of 59, you said, and what, 62? Is there anything less than 62 in the 60s? So what the uh, 59 Q1 is going to be 59 plus 62 divided by 2. It should be 60.5. Q3, uh, if we're, uh, let's see, there's 3 and 3, and three is 6. And then there was 6. So, yeah, they'd both be in the 80s. You got 80 and 83? All right, we'll just take your word for it. I don't feel like spending too much time on this. Um, so 80 plus 83 divided by 2 is 81.5. So what's the interquartile range then? 21. The IQR is 21. 21 times 1.5 is 31.5, 31.5. So we're looking to see 
if um, well, n nothing is going to be 31.5 greater than 81.5. Is anything 31.5 less than 30? I said, no, it's not. So there's no outliers here. There's no outliers. Do I have to write that down? Like, did I lose anybody? Did I go too fast? Once you find the interquartile range, which is this minus that, I subtracted the two that gave me 21. You multiply that times 1.5, which gives you 30.5. You would take it away from the smaller number. You would add it to the bigger number. But nothing falls outside of that. 15.5 minus 30.5 is 30. There's nothing less than 30. There's nothing greater than 112. Any questions on that one? All right, there's two dot plots here, but I'm only going to do one of them. Unless it's fast. Maybe if it's fast, we can both. The students in one, in one social studies class were asked about how many brothers and sisters they have. Here's a dot plot. How many students have six siblings? The students in the social studies class were asked about how many brothers and sisters they have. So, okay, three kids don't have any. One kid has three kids. Three kids have one sibling. Three kids. Okay, so, so th this is the so going up here is uh, you know, what going up is the, is the number of students. And then on the bottom is siblings. So, how many students have six siblings? Yeah, correct. One. That's the one at the end. How many of the students have no siblings? Three. How many of the students have three or more siblings? Three or more can mean every, everything from, um, from three to six. So that's six, 11, times 11. If they ask you how many students are in the class, what would you say? So I'm counting 20 also, yeah. That was pretty fast, we can do the last one. The resting pulse rates were pulse rates were recorded for 16 boys in gym class before they exercised. Uh, here's a line plot. Uh, what is the range of the pulse rates? Okay, so range is greatest minus smallest. It is six. Yeah, the range is six. 85 minus 79 is six. How many boys had a pulse rate? Uh, these are all boys, right? Yeah. So had a pulse rate over 81. Okay, so I, look, I want to point this out. Notice how this said three or more. This one just says over. So on the one above, I included three. When I came up with that 11, I included the three. But here, I'm not going to include the 81. So how many are over 81? Yeah, yeah there are nine. Um, I think I'm going to give back the test or uh, the quiz from last week on Friday. Because we still have until next week, like we have plenty of time. Um, I'm gonna give it back on Friday. But um, if if you're confused on something, ask. Cause I really feel like that quiz should have been pretty easy. Like I think almost everybody should have got hundreds, and and there were some hundreds, but overall it wasn't as good as I thought it was gonna be. So even if it's too simple, if you're stuck, say something. How many boys had a pulse rate of 83? Exactly 83. Um, these next two, I was looking at it. I'm, I'm going to go through these fast because we've already kind of talked about this. And, and some of the words here, I mean, I'm not exactly sure what they're getting at. I mean, they like, uh, you know, there's this fill in the blank, right? The center, what, what, are, what are the main levels of center that we talked about? Huh? Median and, and mean, yeah, mean and median. Mode is a, I guess, a kind of type of measure of center, but it's not a very good one. Uh, what are some measures of spread? You want to see how it spreads something? Uh, no. What are some measures of spread? No, we want to see how spread out something is. Like we literally just did one. What is a measure of? Range would be one. If you want to see how spread out something is, max versus min. Another one you could say is interquartile range. Is also a measure of, uh, of spread. 
um, shape. You know, this is the one. I like. There's one thing I would fill in the blank here, but I don't know. I don't have a key, so I don't know if they're going. You know, what is the shape of a distribution described by? Yeah, I would say the table. I would, I would go with the table, but I don't know if they're going with something. But what are some unusual features, uh, gaps, and outliers. But anyways, um, so here, here, like spread, right? Um, they had this fill in the blank here, but from what I can tell, I, I didn't make this. I, I didn't make this. Okay, so from what I can tell here, they wanted to say that this has a smaller spread, you know, or less spread, and this has a larger spread. It's more spread out than half of them. It spreads all the way from zero to ten. This one only goes from you know, three to one. Okay, now we get into skews. Um, what, what did we call this first type of skew? We've already talked about this. Yeah, symmetric. This one is symmetric. We don't really get into normal distributions, but if you ever do later on, um, a normal distribution is a type of symmetric distribution. All, all, all normal distributions are symmetric, but not all symmetric distributions are normal. You may not know what a normal curve is. If you ever hear it. Just know that a normal curve is a type of symmetric. Uh, okay, how about this next one here? Okay, you could say skewed negative. I, I, I would I would use skewed left more. I, I just think that word is more likely to show up. But yes, if, if you know negative, great, fine. How about this next one here? Skewed right. Sam, why is it skewed right? Why is that distribution skewed to the right? The tail, very good. This thing is just like a little tail, like a little mousey with the tail. The tail's on the right, on the first one, the tail is on the left. And the next one, what type of distribution is that? This is uniform. And these are those unusual features that I said on the last page. Which type of unusual, quote unquote, unusual feature is demonstrated on the first one here? Those are, the, those are the two unusual features that they mentioned on the last page. Yeah, this one looks like it has a gap. It's missing. It's missing values in four and five. What is the uh, What does the next one seem to have? Yeah, it appears it has an outlier on the line. All right, and then this is what I wanted to get to today. Mean absolute deviation. I haven't had a chance to do it here too much. Um, if you were with me in first semester when I gave the practice test, you're going to have a practice test next week. Um, you, you've had one practice test so far this semester. You know, those are the ones that are local tests that I give myself. So I have a little bit more flexibility as to how I can grade them. Um, and I curve them. Well, part of the way I curve them is I use something similar to this. Okay, where what you're doing is you're getting a group of data. Let, let's let, 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 let's calculate. Um, not calculate. Let's interpret each word. Mean absolute deviation, right? What does mean stand for? Huh? Okay, average. Perfect. Yes. What does absolute stand for? When you calculate an absolute value, what are you doing? Come on, you, you guys have never seen absolute value mean these vertical lines? You've never seen that before in math? Don't worry about the rest of the stuff. That, that might seem like a foreign language to you, but you've never seen the little vertical lines? Like if I say, hey, what's the uh, you know, absolute value of negative 7? You don't. Oh, that's 
Some kids might say, oh, you make the way, you make what's inside positive. Okay, that's a little bit crude, but fine. You know, you could say you make what's inside positive. The more specific uh, definition is you're measuring a distance or a magnitude. Okay, so what, in this case, what absolute means is that you're measuring a distance, how far a number is from average. When I, would, when I curve those grades like I'm about to do next week, what your grade is based on is where your grade falls compared to average. If you're above a class average, you're going to get the higher scores. If you're below the class average, you know, you're going to get the lower scores. It, it, it's a way of, of comparing numbers to see where they compare to average. And then deviation is the same, you know, it's like a comparison. How far away is it from, uh, from average? So without getting into this too much, because it's going to confuse you, just real quick, this is a Greek letter. It's called sigma. When you see sigma in math, it means sum. Now that you should know what it means. What does sum mean? It, the main thing that should mean is add. If you should word association, sum should mean add. And what are we adding? We're going to add up the differences, the deviations, between each different number in the set and average. This little symbol here is called X bar. X bar stands for average. It's a way of saying average. Uh, this is a Greek letter for average, too, and I was wrong. Uh, um, mu. Yes, mu. Oh, I want to say you draw it like that. If you ever see that, that's another way of saying average. Could be wrong, though, but I think I'm right. But that, that, that symbol right there is called x bar. When you see the little x bar line on top, it's called x bar. And then you're dividing by how many of the numbers there are in the set. And that's going to give you the mean absolute deviation. So watch. Here we go. This is like a little guided approach. You see the numbers in the set here, right? Uh, all they want you to do in this column is rewrite the numbers. Um, you can write them in order if you want, but you really don't have to. So 12, 13, 17, 14, 12, and 16. The order doesn't matter because this is me. We're not finding median. So add all of those up and divide by six because there's six numbers. Somebody with a calculator, ready, set, calculate. 46, 4, 4 divided by 6, 14. Is it 14? Does everybody agree with that? 14? Okay, so my mean is 14. So all we want to do now is go one by one and see how far away absolute means it's a magnitude. So we're not really, we don't care about if it's above or below, but how far away are each of these numbers from 14? How far away is 12 from 14? 2. How far away is 13 from 14? 1. How far away is 17 from 14? How far away is 14 from 14? 0. How far away is 12 from 14? 2. How far away is 16 from 14? So now this absolute mean deviation is averaging those. The mean is when you average these. The mean absolute deviation, you might see it abbreviated as MAD, M-A-D. It's just when you average those. What are we still going to divide by? Okay, we're still going to divide by 6. So 2 plus 1 plus 3 plus 2 plus 2. Is that 10? So um, 10 plus 6. Uh, that's going to be a nasty, um, it's going to be 5 over 3, so it's going to be like, um, whatever, it's 1.6 for 3. And this, this does it around. Um, about 1.6. Jada, you confused yet? Okay, let's do some more of these. Um, here they ask us for range. I'm not sure why they bother to ask us for range, but 
Why not? Sam, what's the range there of those six numbers? Range is max minus min. The max is 70, the min is 42. So I'm getting 28. The range is 28. It has no effect on what we're doing here, but just for fun. 47, 51, 42, 68, 55, and 70. Now what we do need is the mean. So average those numbers out. What, what does that give you when you average those out? 54, is it exactly 54? And, and we trust. So now let's see how far away each of those numbers are. 55.5 exactly? Or is it rounded? Exactly 55.5? Okay. So let's see how far away each of these numbers are. If you're ever not sure, if you can't do it in your head, just subtract. Just remember that the, the absolute part means that if you, even if you're getting a negative, make it positive. So like... 55.5 um, minus uh, 47 is 8.5. Uh, this gives me 4.5. This gives me 13.5. Uh, 68. 4.5. Okay, this is 0 0.5. And this is uh, 14.5. So then the mean absolute deviation is when we average these numbers out when we average out those, those deviations. So 8.5 plus 4.5 plus 13.5 plus 12.5 plus 0 0.5 plus 14.5 over uh, 6, because there's 6 of them. If I add up all the 0.5s, that gives me uh, 3. And then when I add up all the numbers, 20 and 17 is 37, so 40, 54. I'm getting 54 over 6, which is, um, is 9. I did it in my head, so if anybody wants to correct me, feel free. I'm getting that the mean absolute deviation is 9. Is that what you got? So let's do this then. Let's try to do number three. Nobody has any questions here? So without me guiding you, you on your own do number three. I'll do it silently on the board while you're doing it. Um, all, all I want to know is the mean absolute deviation. You don't have to give me the average. I mean, you're going to have to find it, but um, let me know what you get for mean absolute deviation. I'll do it quietly on the board. Let me get a calculator because I don't feel like my brain hurts. I got five. If anybody got something different than five on their own, let me know. We can figure out what we did differently. But I got five for the main absolute deviation.
Should I stop? Should I go on? Blink once for yes, <coughs> twice for no. Hmm. Saved by the earpiece that you shouldn't be wearing. I know you want to be like me, but it takes time, man. It's not, it's not going to just happen overnight. Kiara, any questions for you? Nice. Did you get sleep last night? Uh, Alright, so I'm going to just do the next one then. When I wrote on the, bo on the board in red there, that X bar, what did that mean? What did X bar mean, that, that red number that I wrote on the board, what does that mean? Yeah, it's the average, that's the mean. That's, that's what helped me calculate each of these. Each of these numbers that I wrote is the, each of the differences. No. I erased it by mistake, but I'm pretty sure my screen said uh, 35.6. Can anybody else get that? Not for those deviations. Actually, wait, that, that can't make sense. 3.56 maybe? Yeah, 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 that doesn't make sense. I, I had it on my screen and I hit erase by mistake. That doesn't make sense. 3.56 will make more sense. Is that what you guys got? You got it, and you got something different. Did you get 7.8 as your uh, as your average? So we all have average, okay? All right. So seven is 0.8 away from from uh, 7.8. Nine is 1.2 away. Two is uh, 5.8 away. Three is 4.8 away. Five is 2.8 away. Um, Ten is 2.2 away from the average. Twelve is 4.2 away. Six is 1.8 away. And then 18 is 10.2 away. So you got the same numbers that I did? But maybe, I, maybe it was my... All right, let me do the calculator again. Because I had it on there and I messed up. I'm getting 35.6, and then once I divide by 10, I'll get it yeah, 3.56. You don't even have a calculator in the car. You try to do mental math, so what do you, what do you argue with me about? 
And did you recheck to see did you do something wrong and now you fixed it or because I worry when me and Anne disagree. I think she's more right than I am. Ha! Any questions then? Okay. Oh, cool. So we can start two way frequency tables then today. Nice. So, uh, we talked a little bit about this the first day. And we talked about marginal frequencies and relative frequencies and all that other good stuff. Um, it's not as hard as it seems. Just understand that a lot of this is used to calculate percentages. Okay. So just real quick overall. Under, what else can a percentage be written as? A decimal would be the obvious one. Okay. A lot of times we see as uh, or a fraction, and uh, that's what I want to point out, okay? On the fraction, your bottom number, your denominator, is going to be important because that's the sample, okay? What the sample means is what group, what set of people are, are you limiting to, to your county? Are you including everybody? Are you only including people that are four? That's always going to go on the bottom. And then on the top is whatever you're ever, whatever you're trying to observe. So like watch. Okay. Um, and here, let's do this. Everybody go back to the first page. And let's go down to the bottom. Okay. The last row and the last column, those are called the margins. So when you talk about marginal frequencies, okay, that's that, that, that's what we're looking at there. When you see the word join, or if you hear me refer to the word join, that's in here, you hear the intersection, that's like the body. Okay. Relative frequency is when you take either one, it could be either one, it could be the margins or the joints or anything, but when you divide, when you're sample. Is everybody that's involved. Okay, when, when, when you're uh, dividing by the total, that's called the relative frequency. Conditional relative frequency is when you limit your sample. If I don't want to count all 50 people in my sample, if I want to limit it, that's called conditional relative frequency. So, like, watch this. Let's go back here to the first one. Okay. Let's just look at the table first. How many total people uh, took part in this uh, survey or whatever it is that they're conducting? 200 people in total. Okay. If you look in the margins, um, let's see, let's say public opinion uh, about increasing the minimum wage. Okay. How many people in total, okay, if we look in the margins, there's 200 people in total in the, in the survey, but how many people were for increasing the minimum wage? Here's four. How many? 105. How many were against it? 70. How many were uh, have no opinion? 25. Those are the margins. Of the people, and we're comparing that to age. We will, we will, I guess we're trying to look and see if, if, if a person's age has anything to do with it. You would think younger people would be more for it because who's typically more likely to make minimum wage? Yeah, young people. Yeah. People typically. Um, now, how many how, uh, in this survey of, of those 200? How many were uh, how many uh, were between 21 and 40? How many people were between 20, uh, 1 years old and 40 years old? 50. So we, in total, there was there was 50. 
How many were between the ages of 41 and 60? 75. How many were between, uh, how many were over 60? Okay. So, in order to accurately compare these numbers, we want to calculate percentages. We want to calculate fractions. A fraction is a comparison of two numbers using division. We want to make ratios. So, let's see. In the 41 to 60 group, so this is already sounding to me like conditional relative frequency because we're limiting our sample. We're not looking at things in total. We're only looking at that group. How many people were in, in total in that group, in the 41 to 60 group? So here, watch. If we could do this, if I were to, maybe this will help. What, what, I'm, what this problem is telling you to do is only look at that line. So out of that, out of those seven, by, by limiting our sample, I don't really have space here. Um, let me just put it in on the side. Out of that 75% only, how many uh, were supported increasing the minimum wage? 30, you know, but Mr. But 105 people um, supported increasing the minimum wage. Yeah, but that's out of everybody. Out of, out of just, if we limit our sample to just people 41 through 60, the, the joint frequency there is 30, 30 out of 75. Now, how do we convert that into a percentage? You divide. So 30 divided by 75. And also uh, in statistics, um, when you talk about percentages, you don't necessarily need to put a percentage sign. So like 30 divided by 75 is 0.4. If you put 0.4, that's fine. You don't have to put it. If you want to put it, that's 40%. So 40% out of that group. Out of the people, it sounds again like, uh, like uh, conditional because we're limiting. Out of the people that have no opinion. So now I'm limiting myself to no opinion. What's going to be my total sample there? How many people have no opinion? How many total people have no opinion? What's the marginal frequency there for no opinion? 25. Okay. So now I'm not going to use the highlighter again. But so out of those, what percentage is over 60 years old? There's 5 out of 25 because that's the joint frequency there. Where no opinion crosses over 60 is 5 out of 25. And that should be 0.2. 20% if they wanted to express as a percent. Okay. Now, look at this. What are the marginal probabilities? Okay. So, see, what I said before were marginal frequencies. When you see probability, think of another word that starts with P. Percentage. So we want to divide. So they want marginal probabilities. That now, now, now we're going to divide by by that 200. So in total, how many were four? How many were four? The the increase in total. In total, in total. Because now, now we're looking at everybody. We just opened it up to everybody. Uh, 105 out of 200. Uh, I believe that is 52.5%, uh, so 0.525. How about against? How many people were against it? 70 out of the 200, that's 35%. How many had no opinion? How many had no opinion? 25 out of 200, that's 12.5%. What percent of people were, um, by the way, if you were to add these up, what should these add up to? Well, what should these probabilities add up to? Well, to one. Yeah, to one. That's 100%. Okay. Now, the same thing should happen with the ages. How many people were between 21 and 40? 50 out of 200 is 0.25. From uh, 41 to 60 was 75. Out of 200, that's uh, 32 point, no, 
37.5, and that's the same thing at the end. There was also 75 people over 60, so that's the same thing. 0.375. If you act, if you want to check and make sure you did that correctly, you should be able to add those up and get to one. 100%. Find the following probabilities. Okay. Notice here, we are not limiting our sample. It's just saying probability. It's not saying like, oh, out of these people or out of these people, we're assuming it's out of everybody. And notice how they're giving you two criteria. So these are, these we're looking at the joint frequencies. Uh, what number is where ages 21 and 40 crosses, uh, crosses with against? 21 and 40 and against, where they intersect. What's the joint frequency there? It is 20. 20 divided by the 200 in total. Uh, is that 10%, 0.1? All of these we're going to divide by 200. If they don't limit your sample, our sample is everybody. No opinion in over 60. What number is where no opinion crosses with over 60? Five. What is five divided by 200? 0 0.025. How about in between 40 and 60 and four? What number is for between 41 and 60 and 4 were those crossed? Four and between 41 and 60 is 30. So I'll put it here. 30 divided by 200 is 0 .0, uh, 0 0.15. 0 0.15. Between 40 Are there any questions so far? That's the main skill to master here, is knowing by what's being asked of you if you have to limit your sample or whether you're going to include everybody on the bottom. That's the main thing. No, because this is not accounting for everybody here. All, all, all I was doing, if I'm dividing by 200, I would have to include all two. In order for it to be able to add up to one, I would have to include everybody these particular problems, these probabilities only accounted for 21 through 40 and against, which is this number, um, no opinion of over 60, which is this number, and then 41 to 60 and 4. There's still people missing from the over the 200. When I did it up here, this accounted for everybody, because everybody had to either be for, against, or have no opinion, which it added up to 100%. This also accounted for everybody, because that's all the ages that were included. Uh, let's see if we can do some closures real quick. Using the table below, construct a table displaying the joint and marginal probabilities. We're going to do that tomorrow. We're going to have to make a whole new table. Uh, well, we can maybe squeeze it in there. Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, maybe even do this on your own. Um, all, all I want you to do here is go to each of these numbers and divide it by 50. Because like, like if, if you're going to see what, what you're seeing now is frequency, how frequent. But what, what did I tell you to think of when you see um, when you see probabilities? A uh, uh, percent. So if I, if I were to reconstruct the table with probabilities, you know, like, I, I'm probably just going to end up using the same one, so I don't have to draw a brand new table. But what should happen now, the, the same way that, like, you know, um, all, what should all of these numbers add up to here, the way that they are right now? They should all add up to 50. Well, if I turn these into percentages, they should all add up to 1. To 1. If I leave them out of the decimal, it should add up to 1. Uh, 60 divided, look, 16 divided by 50 is an easy number to do. It. This is 32%, you know, 0. 0.32. This is uh, 0 0.03. This is um, point, actually, I did it back. I'm sorry. It's point 0.12. This point 0.12. This is point 0.16. This is point 0.04. This is um, point zero, uh, zero point 0.02. This is the uh, same thing, 0 0.16. If I add all those up together, I should get one. 
This here is 0.37. I guess I did this fast. You can write this down. Um, this is 0.32. This is 0.32. What should what should these add up to here? Just those three. Huh? What should 0 0.36, 0.32, and 0.32 add up to? And also the one. Yeah, the margin should add. If you add up all the joints, that should add up to one. If you add up all the margins, that should add up to one. Um, this is 0 0.60, 0 0.6, and 0.7. And then I guess tomorrow, uh, I'll go ahead and say, nah, um, well, you have it written down. We'll answer the questions tomorrow. Um, so if, if tomorrow we can at least finish uh, the two-way tables, we're still kind of on track. When's your test? Next when? Wednesday. Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Next Friday, there's no school.